Virginia Bishop is uh, originally from Iqaluit, Nunavut. I learned that uh, last week that I was saying Nunavut instead of Nunavut. So I hope, I'm sure I'll learn more again today. It is Nunavut. That's that, Nunavut. That's, yeah, yeah. so thank you for that. Um, Iqaluit was known as the Fr Frosh Bisher Bay in English. Frosh Bisher Bay. Frosh Bay. But it's always been Iqaluit, a place of many fish. Iqaluit started out as a military base for American military. Iqaluit has grown and seen a lot of changes in a relatively short period of time. And now the Inuit have had to adjust very quickly, which is not easy and disruptive mentally and intellectually. Exanya is an indigenous cultural helper for nearly two years now and has made a tremendous contribution to the indigenous patients emotionally, culturally, um, emotionally and culturally. So with that, I will turn it over to you and welcome. Tansy. No, I'm not a Cree, but I'm in um, Cree territory. Uh, well, Treaty 6 territory, it's not just Cree. But I, I've learned uh, a few, very few words of uh, Cree, so that I decided to use that uh, to honor the Cree here. Um, I've been a cultural helper for nearly two years. And um, at first I thought, what did I get myself here into? Uh, I was so scared and uh, had no idea that I would uh, uh, get to love this job. I feel like I'm making a big difference to a lot of patients because there are patients that uh, need a lot of uh, support and um, somebody who can listen to them and um, love and care for them and advocate for them when they need advocacy. And uh, I feel like I get a lot more from the patients than they do get from me because uh, I feel I get the strength from, from the patients and uh, I'm, I feel very honored to be working here uh, at the Royal Alex Hospital. Uh, I'm not sure where to start, but um, I'm Atsai Nok Bishop. I'm originally from the Kalui Nunavut. I was born and raised there when it was known as Frobisher Bay, but it's always been the Kalui uh, for the Inuit. Um, I was uh, adopted by my biological father's um, aunt and uncle. So when I was born, he, he became my cousin. And uh, he, always, he was always teasing me, calling me Tigua, the adopted one. I used to think that he hated me, but uh, it was actually... Uh, because he loved me so much that he, he would tease me that way. And I was always involved with both families. So when I'm talking about family, I'm thinking about uh, my biological and adoptive side. And it's like one big family to me. Um, okay. Well, maybe I can start with uh, annual sea lift. Uh, when I was growing up, uh, I remember when we used to go do sea lift uh, on the uh, Frobisher Bay, when it was low tide, uh, the whole community used to get involved with the sea lift uh, back then. And we, well, I, I had fun. Uh, with a couple of some other kids that I knew and played around and um, challenge each other who who's stronger and who's the weakest. So that was part of our fun doing sea lift. Even um, women with their babies in their back were all also involved with the sea lift. So the whole community, uh, and I think. 
we get uh, some money from the Hudson Bay store uh, after. I, I didn't see the money, but I think my parents took care of it for, for us kids. Um, but they don't have uh, the community involved with sealers anymore. They use machines now, which is good. It would be dangerous now, I think. Uh, a safety issue. Uh, we'd also be going camping every summer to our traditional camp where my parents and my ancestors uh, lived and survived. Uh, I remember the men would go caribou or goose or other wildlife uh, hunting and they'd be gone for hours. They'd be on their feet uh, going up the hills or mountains. Uh, but I never followed them so I don't know. I didn't really see what happened. I'm just going to do this. But uh, most of the time they would come back uh, with caribou, maybe two or three, depending on uh, how much caribou there was out on the land. And uh, they butcher that caribou out there on the tundra and um, cut them. And hardly anything was wasted. The only parts that was wasted was the stomach. The stomach contents, everything else uh, they, they took. And, uh, and then they put them in the caribou hide and um, wrap it up and um, carry, the, carry it on their back. Uh, I think they used the uh, rope to tie them up. Um, as kids, we, we used to have to do some chores like uh, look after the little ones, carry them in the amotic. Amotic is a, a, a parka made especially to carry babies. They're usually hooded. And um, your hands are free. You don't have to carry the hand baby around. It's in your back. So the baby is comfortable and most of the time, the babies would fall asleep in the back. And um, sometimes we would pretend to be moms and dads. And uh, we'd be carrying a baby or a puppy in the MOT. So we had a lot of fun. And uh, explore on the land. One time I remember when we were exploring, we saw old uh, graveyard, or grave, an old grave burial uh, that they had used uh, stones. And then we saw a skeleton and we, we all got scared and ran away from it. But we were young and naive back then. Um, we also, have to uh, fetch some water from uh, the lake. Sometimes we end up uh, swimming in the lake after we fill the containers. But we didn't go very deep because uh, we weren't very good swimmers. Um, I the, the part that I really liked was uh, going to bed in the tent uh, my parents are still up and have visitors. They're telling stories about their hunting or whatever they did that day. And sometimes they'd be talking about ghost stories. And uh, I'd fall asleep while, while they were still talking and then waking up in the morning, the smell of uh, tea and bannock and the sound of birds like loons and geese and ducks and the buzzing of the bees. Talk about bees. Um, most Inuit are scared of bees. Um, when you hear a bee or see a bee, um, we'd be saying, kare, kare, kare. it's like a warning. There's a bee around 
and everybody would uh, run away from the bee. And one time when I was a little girl, I don't know how old I was. I must have been about five or six years old. I was playing just outside of our tent. My parents had just finished putting tent up. And uh, I started running away from the bee into the tent. The tent was wide open. And uh, then I fell, I fell on the uh, camp stove and uh, burned my bum. So I got a little scar there from running away from a bee. Um, we'd also be berry picking. There's different types of berries. They're not very big, but they're tasty. There's uh, blackberries, crowberries, blueberries, um, Apic berries, I think they're called, uh, I'm not sure what they're called. They kind of look like uh, raspberries, but uh, orangey, yellowy color. And there's also small cranberries, which we call kimminate. And kalate, I'm not sure what they're called in English. Um, all these things I know in Inuit, I don't always know in English. Um, and then we also be, be, be picking, um, what is it called? Uh, sorrel, the mountain sorrel. They kind of look like uh, spinach. Yeah, um, you drop them in your hand and put it in your mouth. They're kind of a little bit sour. But I could compare them with uh, spinach, but in smaller, they're small, way smaller than the spinach. And uh, we'd be, uh, we, the Kaluit area has, very, in, uh, we have very, very low tide and we can get very high tide uh, during, uh, what do they call it? It's that monthly thing. Anyways, uh, we would go and pick um, or dig clams, what we call amumadri. And when you get a hold of the, the penis, I don't know the proper term in English for that, but when you get a hold of it, it's very strong and the clam would start uh, going down. I, I guess they use their suction uh, and they're so hard to dig, especially when it's mud, when they're going down in the mud and it's rocky, uh, you get a lot of uh, sores on your hands. And uh, we eat clams either cooked or raw. Um, I like them both ways, but I prefer it raw. Well, mostly I prefer uh, the Inuit food raw because that's what I'm used to. Um, and the clams too, when they've been eaten by uh, walrus, they're called uh, ipixonate. I've never tasted them, but I've heard that they're very tasty. They taste a little bit different from fresh clams. So that that's something I have to try one day. Whenever, if I ever go back home again, because it's so expensive to go there. Uh, what else? We used to also uh, go egg picking in the springtime. I, it would be late May or early June. I remember one time I, I went with my brother and his family. I was about 10 years old. We ran out of a uh, bannock and we have to be eating mostly uh, boiled duck eggs. And I got so tired of them. Uh, that's all we were we were eating, other than uh, seal or caribou. Um, what else is there? Sorry about this. Okay.
Okay, uh, I'll talk about dog slaughtering. Um, when my people first moved into uh, settlements after they had lived out on the land for, for all their lives, uh, they, after they got moved to the settlements, which was forced by the government, the dog teams were slaughtered by the RCMP without consulting with the, with the people first. And uh, a lot of Inuit were angry and uh, they lost their means of uh, transportation. Um, their uh, independence and uh, a lot of uh, the people were, well, the men mostly were angry about it. And I used to wonder why some of my uncles would express how much they hated white people. I learned later on because of that incident when the dogs were slaughtered by the RCMP. And um, I don't know if they were ever compensated for the loss of their dogs. And then they they had to uh, they started working. Uh, well, a lot of the Inuit didn't have education back then, so they did a lot of menial work, like um, honey bucket for uh, there was flush toilets back then. I remember when the men would come to our place every day to pick our bucket. Sometimes it would, it would be pretty full, if, depending on, on how many visitors we've had at our place. If we had a lot of visitors, it would get pretty full. And uh, I guess they would be pretty heavy and the, the men carrying them out uh, would be kind of wobbly. And sometimes it would spill over to the floor and I'd have to be the one to clean up after them. And I, I hated that part of chore. Uh, I also remember um, having to, well, we used to have ringer washing machines and first time I used a ringer washing machine, uh, I didn't know how to use it properly. So I was putting clothing through and my, my one of my hands got caught and got through. And that really hurt, so my arm was sore for quite a while. And we used to have to uh, dry them outside. We didn't have dryers then. Uh, the part I liked about um, outdoor laundering was the, the smell of the clothing because it smelled so fresh. Uh, and um, I used to look after my nieces and nephews too quite a bit uh, after my oldest sister lost her husband. Her husband uh, died when I was about 11, I think, 11 or 12. So I looked after them quite a bit because my sister had to work. And uh, sometimes I'd have one of my nieces or nephews in, in the Amotic and go to the local um, pool hall. And uh, I'd be playing pool even with the uh, with the babe, a heavy baby in my back as I loved playing pool back then. Um, <clears throat> another thing we used to do as kids was playing hide and seek in to play. It was like you have to, when you find a person, you have to tag them. Uh, I, I'm kind of forgetting all these things that we used to do when we were kids. But we sure had fun playing outdoors, even in the wintertime. Um, I, I don't remember playing indoors a lot. We, I mostly played outdoors with my friends. 
And uh, I remember lear learning to skate uh, going downhill, um, the new skates that I had. Well, most of the stuff that I had was hand-me-down. So one of my sister's uh, old skates, I, I used to learn to skate. Um, the food, most of the food that we ate when I was growing up was uh, seal, like ring seal, harbor seal, Harp seal, walrus, uh, mattak from uh, beluga whale, uh, caribou. I remember when any of the men from my family would come back from seal hunting and then I'd be asked to um, go to the neighborhood and tell them that they were invited for the feast. Uh, this was before we had phones. I was, a, I think the first phone we got, I think I was about um, seven or eight. So I, I was quite young uh, when I'd be asked to go, ask neighborhood to come. Um, the men would be cutting up the the seal and the upper part of the seal was eaten by uh, the, the women and children. And most of us kids liked having the eyeballs, the throat with, um, with the blubber in it and uh, tulima, the, the ribs. Uh, can I get uh, Jamie to roll those pictures? please? Yeah, sure. I can do that right now. I've been forgetting to do that. <laughs> it's okay. So there are some pictures with uh, people eating seal. Uh, we used to, when we're eating uh, with our hand, uh, of course, we used our teeth. Uh, our faces would get full of blood. And that was all part of the fun of eating seal. Uh, this is uh, Iqaluit. The first picture was a picture of Iqaluit when I was there uh, two years ago. The only times I've been able to go up there now is uh, when I lose a family member uh, because I can't afford to fly back up there because I think it's probably close to $4,000 now uh, return from here. So that, this was, this is one of the latest pictures I have of Ikalui. It's a, uh, it used to be, when I was growing up, it was a village. Right? There were less than 500 people. And then it was starting to grow and then in turn it, it became a town and now it's, a, it's considered a city, but a small city. I'm not sure what the population is there now, maybe close to 10,000, which is still not very many. Uh, these eye goggles I'm wearing are traditional uh, eye goggles to prevent the uh, snow blind, especially for the hunters. And most of them were made of baleen, which is from a um, humpback whale or they would be made of a uh, caribou bone. And um, this is what I've made. My daughter is wearing black and her cousin, my niece is wearing red. They throat sing. My daughter is a throat singer. I don't have that gift uh, because when I was growing up, uh, I, I hadn't heard about it until Later on, probably when I was in my 20s, I only started learning about it. So, and I've tried throat singing before, and I'm not very good at that. I, I probably sound more like a raven crowing, trying to throat sing. Uh, it's very hard. You have to 
you have you have to have the gift of throat singing, and I don't have that. This was uh, this is my daughter wearing a, a outfit by her sanajit. Uh, sanajit is a lady that helped me to deliver her. Um, so they had a close relationship because uh, her sanajit. Uh, helped me deliver her and and her son would call my daughter Amnalia and uh, that's why she made the amalti for her. It was a gift to her. And the seal skin comics that she's wearing uh, have been dehaired. Uh, the feet are usually made of, um, I think it's harbor, harbor seal because the hide is thicker than the ring seal, and it would be more waterproof. The upper part is usually uh, made of um, uh, seal skin or caribou hide. And this is me on the right, the one with the white amaltic carrying one of my nephews, and my foster sister carrying uh, probably one of my nieces or nephews. We were taking a walk. We were, I, I forget, I, I think we might have been about 16, 17 years old at that time. So a lot of the time she would be looking after uh, uh, our nieces and nephews. And these are freshly caught uh, seal. Uh, they're hanging over because the, the blood is dripping from their heads. These are the ring seals. And there's a man cutting up a seal. This is probably um, a community feast and uh, the seal had been oh, oh. freshly caught. And um, we like having freshly caught seal because it's very fresh and tasty. The smaller, the, uh, the younger the seal, the tastier for me. Uh, and I was gonna say that the lower part of the seal is much more strong tasting the, than the upper part. And I had a, a taste from it and I didn't really like it myself. Also, we, my parents, well, my mother used to make igunok out of uh, seal meat. Igunok is a fermented meat. I grew up uh, eating a lot of fermented uh, seal meat. Uh, and then later on, I, I started having fermented walrus and I prefer fermented seal because it's probably because I grew up by uh, having it. And it's very strong flavor. Um, I haven't had it for so long. I don't think I can, my stomach can handle it anymore. Um, because I have, uh, I think what, I think it's called X, what is it? X pylori? I'm, I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. It's problem with the stomach. I have to take pill for that every day. Um, uh, ulus are made um, for different purposes. H. pylori, thank you, Amber. Uh, ulus are, there's different types of uluit. Uluit is plural for one ulu. Uh, there's different purposes. The one, uh, the two top ones would be used mainly for uh, skinning uh, seal, the, the fat of the seal, uh, or chopping uh, frozen meat. And um, sometimes they're small uluit. Uh, the, la, the, la, the bottom two, they're shaped differently, are called, uh, what are they called? Kimatu, kimatuti, they're mainly used for cutting hide uh, so that you don't cut the fur off when you, don't, when you want to use uh, the fur to make mitts or kami. Meat. These are some women having uh, 
seal having a piece in a, I think this would be in a kamak. Uh, a kamak is um, usually made of uh, scrap material that mostly the women put together, like built. Uh, built. And it's usually, um, they, it's like one big room with, um, in the back, there's a, a platform where everybody can sit around or sleep on. And uh, I kind of remember being in Nakamak when I was small. I think we first lived in Nakamak when we went after my parent, my family had moved to Iqaluit um, after living out on the land. There was no housing for them when they first moved there. So they had, to, they gathered up any kind of straps, mostly wood and paper and put it together. And uh, they mostly use um, to keep their homes warm. And I, I'm sure Guta talked about um, that it was what it was used for. It was used for uh, cooking or keeping your your kamak or it blew warm or even for drying clothing. These are some kids that are eating uh, raw seal meat uh, and they're having a rip enjoying their meal. And another person cutting up a seal. It, it looks like a small seal, so that would be the tasty tastiest one. The flippers are also fermented, which we call uh, uchak. And uh, it has pretty strong flavor too. I, I can't really compare the taste of seal to anything I've eaten down here. So if anybody ever goes up north to Inuit communities, it's a must try. Uh, most Inuit are pretty friendly and will share what they have, even if even if they have the smallest amount. This is my nephew and my niece when they were small. They're in their thirties now, so they were enjoying the seal. And. This is in a museum, I believe, in Pangatan, and I think that would have been a kapma. Uh, uh, the platforms are probably, were probably where families slept. And this is in the Kaluit when it was Provish Bay back then, and I don't remember that hospital. I think that's where I was born. Uh, I don't know what's going on there, but I remember that guy, Tikibik, uh, he was my cousin's husband. Uh, he was well known there too. This is Kaluit, uh, probably in the late 60s or early 70s. And the, the airport is on the left-hand side. And the other way is uh, on the right hand side is part of the community. And this is in the apex area, uh, it's a smaller, it's part of the Iqalid, but they like to, they, they are so proud of uh, being called the people of apex. They like to think that they're not part of Ikale, but they really are. Uh, this is a matchbox house. Um, I think it's it's more like a bachelor home, very small. That's what uh, they first started building in Ikale. The old Hudson Bay store. Uh, this is where, um, in the front um, was the, the tide, the low tide is where we used to have um, sea lift. I'm not sure when this picture was taken. 
And these are mostly the comebacks that I was talking about where Inuit uh, started building their own, own houses uh, from scraps. And that's a tent because there was no housing for the Inuit when they moved in, that's where they were living in. And I think these may have been American military. From what I've heard, uh, the American military was more generous than the Canadian military. I can't really talk too much about that because I don't know. This is a aerial photo of Iqaluit. I'm not really sure when that was taken. And I remember Iqali being that way, smaller houses, and everything was a lot more simpler. Uh, and, um, and it, that's when it was starting to grow. Um, they had those row houses, townhouses, the high rise building. I remember when it was being built, it was uh, probably in the late 60s when they started building it. So if anybody has any questions, I'm free uh, for questions. Uh, this is a more recent picture of the country from, uh, from the Bay. Excellent. Yes, there was one question that did come through. It was it was a bit ago, but it was asking, what is a sea lift? If you could explain oh, that. Oh, oh yes. Uh, well, the sea uh, the annual sea lift is. Uh, food and other supplies that are brought in from uh, south because um, we don't have road system. Every, mo most everything has to be brought in by sea lift. Uh, but the fresh produce and milk would have to be flown in. Did that answer that somebody's question? Yes, that's great, thank you. And um, Exenia, I, I heard that Jamie, you had sent Jamie a few videos. I know myself, I'm, I love the pictures, but I'm also interested if, if you have oh, yeah, some videos yeah. you want to show us. Start with the, <laughs> I was going to start with a video of my daughter and one of her throat singing partners, uh, throat singing uh, here in Edmonton a few years ago. Can you play that, um, Jamie? Sure can. Yeah, I'll just pull that up. Thank you. I'm so disorganized. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, this is beautiful. We love learning more about the Inuit culture. Um, you know, there's a number of Inuit people that come down and receive services. And I think it's really important that we learn more as well. So we, we truly appreciate uh, you sharing of your culture. Oh, thank you. So my daughter is on the left hand side. Her name is Malaya. She's named after my mom. And her friend is Jenna. They met uh, at Canada Place uh, about eight years ago when I was doing a pres presentation about Inuit. Uh, and my daughter came along. Jenna was working there. They were introduced and they connected right away. So they're pretty good with uh, throat singing together. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
and they're out, outdoing each other. <laughs> Can you play the rest, please? Jamie? Yeah, I sure can. They are on a couple of separate videos, so I'll just uh, take a moment yeah, to pull sorry. those up as well. No, that's okay. It's on. It's Carol. Uh, just to let you know, it's really hard to hear you when the video is on. We oh, can okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, it's okay. It's good. Thank yeah. you. You're great, by the good way. Good to know, though. They have to have a lot of water uh, around because it's so hard on the boat when they're floating. I've been looking for a video of throat singing for so long. And so now <laughs> I just love that, that it's our very own that has one. So this is beautiful. <laughs> tell you uh, the names of those songs that they're singing. They can, they, they always uh, talk about uh, what they're singing and the history of throat singing, which I don't have a lot of knowledge about because uh, I wasn't, uh, when I was growing up, I, I don't remember hearing about it until later on in my life, but it's come back to, the younger generation is uh, doing all the folk singing. And uh, when I, I, I learned to, I was start, I started to learn to sew when I was young, but um, I didn't really learn how to make uh, the kamik, the, the seal skin or caribou skin boots. Uh, the younger generation is learning those trades a lot more now than we used, we were, we ever learned. Uh, and I'm proud of them. And I'm jealous of them too at the same time. Uh, yeah, this is uh, after the, the Inuit started moving into the communities, uh, the settlements, and that's uh, one of the kamma out there. This looks like it would be in the uh, springtime, like the spring there is later than here. So I think this may, may, may have been in May. And this would probably be uh, around June maybe, or July. Um, the summers back home didn't get very hot. I remember the hottest temperature was about 16 degrees, but I think they're getting warmer weather these days because of the climate change. Uh, so they've really been impacted. The hunters don't really like it because uh, the snow or uh, the ice is not forming 
as early and it's uh, breaking up a lot earlier than it used to be. And they're starting to see different wildlife that they hadn't seen up there before, like different birds and even different uh, fish. Um, growing up, um, everybody, everybody had open door policy. Um, and most of us kids were very shy. We'd go into somebody's home and we'd be very quiet and observe everything, what everybody else was doing. And uh, we mostly used our body language when we're communicating, mostly the kids. Uh, one of them was uh, saying yes or no. We'd be saying, like going like, this, this is no, and this is yes. If you can see what I'm doing, yes or no. Um, this is probably when they had a community event where everybody was. This is, uh, he was, this is Aunakalak. He was uh, one of the well-known hunters back home. He traveled to uh, other communities such as Pangertang, uh, traveled like Clyde River. Uh, it was mostly by dog team. Uh, some men, when they traveled from one community to another, they'd be traveling far and they'd have more than one wife like, and have uh, families from different communities, like children, which was very common back then. This is uh, Simon and Michael, uh, late Simon and Mac Michael. He was the first LMA MLA for Ikanuk. When the government of the Northwest Territories was still based in uh, Yellowknife. And these are hunters coming back. Uh, looks like they're carrying uh, caribou in the back. And of course they use their dogs to help carry the heavy stuff. I think they would, were, would have been a lot stronger than the men that are now because they didn't use machines very much back then. They had to use their, their muscles. And this lady is cooking something using a kuluk. And this is the sila. The lady uh, on the left with the amautic is my biological mother. Uh, they, they were carrying even with the baby in their backs. Kids playing on the uh, low tide on, on top of the supplies. This is uh, all part of the sea lift. Uh, looks like they're bringing in a vehicle there. There was, I don't remember seeing a lot of vehicles when I was growing up. We mostly walked uh, everywhere, even, even uh, to Apex. Apex was uh, about uh, five kilometers away from Ikalu. And of course, um, some people wanted to uh, get to wherever they want uh, quicker so they would get on the pickup truck. These are uh, beautifully made sealskin uh, kamit. We call them kamit because uh, uh, they're a pair. 
And a lot of women are so good at doing embroidery and uh, the sewing would be very tight so that uh, they're waterproof. And these are kids kami. More pair of uh, kami. There's different designs. Uh, some people like them be heard. I think it's because uh, it's better when you're walking through water. They're more waterproof. And this is my biological mother holding my daughter. Uh, she's wearing her traditional caribou skin parka that she had made. And uh, some of the crafts, one of the, the, some I have made, I made this one. Uh, one of my cousins made this uh, uh, lemming. You know what a lemming is? It's uh, like a mouse. I remember when my, my oldest nephew was only two years younger than me. And he came home with a, a lemming and he had caught it by hand. And when I got a hold of it, I, I don't know how old I was. Uh, I was quite young. The next thing it was dead, I must have squeezed it. Um, my, my nephew was very good at catching birds and lemming by hand. And when I, when I tried to sneak up on a, a bird, it flew away right away, even though I was far from it. My, so my nephew was very good at sneaking up to them. This is one of my uh, crafts, uh, it's an uktik, snowy owl. And that's another one. Uh, I, I make these uh, for, uh, to make uh, Christmas ornaments. And these uh, are earrings, uh, Ulu earrings that somebody from Arctic Bay had made. There's not a lot of jobs in the, lot, in the smaller communities. So uh, the people in the communities uh, make a lot of stuff uh, to make some money out of them. And this was gifted to me by a cousin. It's a, a, a cushion. Uh, she uh, applicates the Ulu designs on them. And I had made those uh, miniature comic. And a carving by my oldest brother who is in a long-term care. He, he has uh, dementia. Uh, my oldest sister who was a year older than him passed away last year. They, they both had dementia. And this was uh, another gift from a friend, uh, Ulu designed uh, beaded dwelling. I don't know what that is. Uh, I think maybe, oh yeah, that's a harpoon. Uh, everything that, or mostly everything that, uh, well, the harpoons are made by hand, uh, none of the stuff that, a lot of the stuff that we make are made by hand. We don't use machines, except for parties. Yeah, uh, any questions? I actually have one at Sina. I noticed with the, the, the children, everybody uh, and everyone else are eating a lot of the meat. Um, Eating a lot of the meat raw. So, how long does that? How long does the does that meat sit out? And it uh, before you before you have to discard it and use it for something else rather than just eating it at that time. 
usually there's no there's no time to discard it because everybody ate it. <laughs> That's uh, a perfect answer. Thank you. <laughs> well, most of us like to share uh, the meat. As we feel that uh, food tastes better shared. Even if it's the smallest amount, uh, they like to share. I guess that's about it. I think we do have a couple of questions. I just wanted to look in the chat box at Sina. We did have somebody ask if you use, um, no, I'm just looking for that question again, moose toughing. If you use, do you use moose tuffing? And I think you were talking about some of the crafts. Oh, moose tuffing. We don't have moose up there. I know there's, um, by, uh, what is it? Muskox in some areas, but not where I come from. I guess that's about it, eh? I think there's another one as well too. Um, for your crafts, it looked like you had some uh, material that you were using that was uh, cotton, cotton. So I think the question is, what types of materials are you using in your crafts? Oh, the outfits that I have made for my daughter and her throat singing partners? Those as well, but it was more of the craft items that you were, but if you could talk about both, that would be really nice. Okay. Um, the ornaments I used felt. Um, the little miniature comics, I, I used leather and seal skin, and then I did a little bit of embroidery on them. Uh, what else was there? Oh, the, the Ukpik, the snowy owl, I used uh, rabbit fur. Uh, sometimes they're Sometimes some women use uh, seal skin to make uh, Excuse me. Uh, what else? Okay, perfect. I'm talking about uh, uh, the clothing that uh, the seal skin used to make clothing. Uh, they, well, they obviously they have to scrape the blubber off first, and then um, then it's most of the fat is removed and then they put it in the frame and stretch it and um, leave it outside to dry. And then when they bring it in, um, us kids used to have to stomp on them to soften them a bit because they're so hard. And uh, the women would scrape, scrape them to make them more soft, more soft. And uh, to make the comics, the bottom, the soles, you still have, they use um, the here, the um, harp seal or harbor seal, which one of the two, because it's the thickest and most uh, waterproof. And they have to keep it wet so it's easier to uh, to sew it. And of course they have, they use their mouth uh, and uh, keep biting it to keep it tender. And I had done some chewing of the hide too, and it's so hard on the mouth and the teeth. Your, te your, your tongue will get numb from chewing it or putting it in your mouth for a long period. And I think we have time for maybe one more question here. Uh, I don't know if Noella is still here, Noella Cardinal because you had put something in there talking about uh, wanting to know a comparison of seal meat. Did you want to maybe come off mute if you're still here, Noella, and you could ask at Saina? Hi, at Saina. Hi. <laughs> I work alongside at Saina and I was just so excited about her presentation. Um, we, I think collectively, I can speak for all of us when we say we don't, uh, get this opportunity uh, to learn more about uh, your people at Sina and where you come from and the culture. So just a really invaluable, uh, it's just, uh, I'm just so lucky to work with you, but this presentation, I, I um, 
absolutely made the time. I couldn't wait for this presentation. Um, but I thought uh, one hour was going to be too long. <laughs> not long enough. Not long enough. I'm wondering, um, do you have a comparison when you think about seal meat, like, and what it tastes like? Is there any comparison that you might be able to compare it to? I really can't compare it with anything. You're going to have to go up there and <laughs> all that stuff. You'll have to take me home with you one day when we have an extra $4,000 lying around. Yeah. <laughs> That's expensive. But um, yeah, I also, uh, I wanted to say, because part of our role at China, both of us are uh, cultural helpers and, and what we do and what we bring to um, our roles as being a familiar face. And for you, uh, yeah, you know, I've always been so proud and happy to say that we have you with us. Uh, at our hospitals, uh, when we have someone coming from um, the Inuit communities, I'm wondering, um, you know, it's easy uh, when I can just refer patients to you and say, could you visit this patient? And I know um, how valuable that is just because you're familiar, you speak the language. Mm. But when you're walking, when you're coming from uh, uh, your community, what could you say? Because I know in the lowest hole, there's um, in one of the waiting room areas, there's the whole waiting room that's filled with um, beadwork, beadwork from all Treaty 6, 7, 8 territory. And so for me, that's nice. That's welcoming. Is there mm -hmm. something to you that would, uh, that would give you that welcome for your people, if there was something that we could uh, put that was visual or uh, something that was familiar to you and your people, uh, what would that be? Oh, yeah. Um, maybe um, an inukshuk or some wall hanging. Uh, anything that was made by Inuit, like crafts, even a uh, I don't know. Any craft item uh, would be nice if that could be uh, purchased from a crafter. I know that uh, I've been to Nate and they had uh, handmade uh, sealskin uptick, the, the snowy owl. And they also had um, Inukshuk, amongst other indigenous uh, handmade items. Awesome. Thanks, Atsaina, for the presentation. I learned so much, even though I work with you every day. Uh, it's. Uh, it was so nice to sit through. I've got a million questions, but I'll save them for one of our lunch hours. <laughs> yeah, it's just that I wasn't very organized, but I was able to pull, pull through. And I hope um, it was all understandable. That's fine. It was a privilege to have you present today. We are so thankful you you shared with us su such great information and and we really, really appreciate that. I learned so much today and I'm so thankful for that. So I just want to remind everyone that this session has been recorded and we will get it uploaded onto the Together for Health page so you, so you can look at it again. Some of the beautiful videos and photos that Atsina shared with us. And so thank you again at Sinus. So appreciate you sharing today. And I would like to encourage everyone if you wanted to go into the next session for some highlights and for the final prayer that has already started, but you could still join that. So again, everyone, thanks. Have a great weekend. And again, thank you so much at Sinus. It was a lovely presentation. Thank you for putting the pictures up and thanks to that technical person. I don't even know the person's name. It starts with the B. I'm not sure how to pronounce the person's name. That's okay. I will thank them for you. I'll send an email. And you are so welcome at Sina. Mm -hmm. We'll see you again soon. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye.